E agora, é, avancei muito no tempo, não? Eu gostaria de chamar o especialista é, Matias Lampin. Ele é Senior Research Fellow at the Max Planck Institute for Intellectual Property and Competition Law. E ele vai falar da sua palestra agora. Please come. I give the floor to Matthias Lamping. Okay. Well, I would also like to start with uh, expressing my uh, thanks to, to everybody who has been organizing this conference, which has uh, really been uh, very enriching until uh, now. And I would also like to express a, a special thanks to, uh, to Sean. I don't know where he is, uh, but he invited me to this conference. And I'm not sure whether it was his decision to make this uh, in Rio or whoever's decision it was. But I must admit that it was really clever because, I mean, the, the conference could have, could have been really bad, the presentation's really bad, and everybody would come to Rio anyway because it's, it's simply Rio. So that, that, that was really clever. And Jeremy just told me a few minutes ago that the next one is going to be in, in South, South Africa. So no comment on that, but I wonder what's, what's going to come next because after that it can only get worse. But um, I'm happy if you, if you prove me wrong. So what, uh, what I would like to do is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to predict the future, I'm just going to present a, a project that we've started at the Max Planck Institute roughly a year ago. That was in October 2011, as far as I recall. It was not Rio, it was not South Africa, it was Berlin. And it was Berlin in winter, so it wasn't that, that, that pleasant anyway. But we still made, uh, managed to, to, to get uh, 50 patent scholars, uh, 50 patent academics to, to, to Munich from around uh, 25 countries. We spoke about the problems uh, that we have, about the current issues that we have in patent law. And the outcome of that, uh, that discussion, which lasted uh, two and a half days, was, uh, was the idea, basically was the, the idea or the, 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 we were convinced uh, to have a patent declaration. Uh, which, which is a declaration, I will, I'll go into more detail uh, afterwards, but which basically is a declaration to show up the, in principle, the obligations that international law imposes on states with regard to the design of their patent systems and the flexibility that it leaves to them. But before uh, getting to the, to the why and to the what and to whatever uh, of, of this declaration, uh, let me just start with, with a very general statement, which, uh, which of course uh, everybody of you know here, but I think is, is worth of recalling, and that is that the patent, uh, that patents are actually regulatory institutions. So whatever their their, their purpose or the, or their goals is in the, in the net within the national system, whether it's, it is to promote innovation, whether it is to to promote the transfer of technology, to to attract foreign investment, to to support the local industry to make trade gains or to avoid trade losses or to whatever, in the end the patent system must be tailored to, uh, to, the, to the national system. That is, it must be tailored uh, firstly to the, to the conditions of national innovation and it must be t uh, within which, uh, of course, uh, which it is, it is supposed to serve and it must be tailored to the characteristics of the national economy within which it is supposed to uh, produce its effects and within, uh, within which it is supposed to operate. So this obviously requires a certain degree of regulatory flexibility. And this is precisely why we, um, we started uh, this project. Because if you think about it, the, the world's uh, major patent systems uh, we have today were able to, to develop into their current state uh, at, at times uh, where, where, they, where there was a high degree of, uh, of sovereign autonomy. So the states didn't have to care about, international, about comprehensive international inter intellectual property agreements. They didn't really have to care much about globalization. So they could simply uh, design their systems according to their national needs and priorities. And they could, of course, uh, adapt their systems to changing national needs and priorities. That was uh, relatively easy, easy at that time. Now, today, we face a completely different situation. Today, states face uh, a very complex regime of, uh, made up by bilateral, multilateral, and, uh, and plurilateral agreements, which get more and more complex. They get more and more uh, fragmented. And uh, by that, of course, they set more and more limits to national uh, regulatory autonomy. And everybody knows that ever since the incorporation of, of intellectual property into the WTO uh, trade uh, regime, which happened with the TRIPS agreement, 
things have gotten more and more difficult for, for national legislators uh, to, to develop their own views and the, their own policies on, 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 on IP and especially on, on, on the patent system. Now this is not really a theoretical problem, it is also a practical dilemma because it, uh, it naturally affects the, the ability of states to find a balance, uh, to find a balance between on the one hand uh, the need for international protection of uh, intellectual property on globalizing markets and on the other hand uh, the need to um, for both a sufficient freedom to regulate national innovation markets and a broad policy space uh, to uh, pursue national public interest goals. And this is what uh, brings me to, to the second question mark, uh, the what. What are, what are we actually doing with the, with, with the patent uh, declaration? So from a purely legal perspective, getting out of, the, of, of this dilemma of a, of, a, of a decreasing regulatory autonomy of states can be two ways. We can either try to amend the international legal system, we can try to amend uh, the TRIPS agreement, we can try to amend uh, whatever, or we can live with what we've got, we can try to make the best out of it, which is basically the, the approach that we pursued with the patent declaration. Although, of course, the, 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 the first approach ha also has its merits and is, is important for the development of uh, the interna international IP system, but we cho chose the second approach, which is uh, the approach of interpretation. Now, our goal, the goal we're pursuing with the patent declaration is not to change international law. We do not want to change the wording of, of the TRIPS agreement or any other agreement related to intellectual property. We simply want to show up the flexibilities and the regulatory flexibilities that uh, this agreement uh, still leaves to states. Because at the end of the day, the TRIPS agreement is, is not all that bad. It has been criticized for the last 20 years. But the, it has its merit and in the end it's just a matter of, of interpretation and if you get it right, if you understand the, the, the provisions of the agreement right, then it does provide for quite some balance. Now we have actually followed the, a very similar approach in another project which might be more familiar to some of you here, which is uh, the copyright declaration, which uh, basically uh, promotes a more balanced interpretation of, the, of Article 13 of the TRIPS agreement, which is the three-step test in copyright. Now, in contrast to the copyright declaration, the patent declaration is uh, more broad. Of course, we also deal with the three-step test in, in patent law, which is Article 30. But we also deal with, uh, with, with other more uh, topical uh, problems in, in the area of patent law, which is, for example, the, the one-size-fits-all problem. We have, I mean, we, we know, we've known since, since decades that, uh, that the patent system will, will not work as a, as a one-size-fits-all system. We have biotechnology, we have information technology, we have uh, mechanical engineering, and all of these industries, of course, operate along different patterns. They have uh, different uh, business um, um, activities, they have different ways of, 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 of innovative, innovative activities. So we need a system which is uh, more differentiated, which is more nuanced. And that relates to Article 27 of the TRIPS Agreement, where we have a non-discrimination provision, which basically says that you are not allowed, when designing your patent system, to discriminate between different fields of technology. Now, what does that really mean? Does that mean that we need one patent system for, for every field of technology? Or does that mean that we are allowed to differentiate according to a job objective criteria and have a slightly different system for biotechnology and a slightly different system for, for information technologies? These are things that we want to show up. Another problem is, is uh, local working requirements, which of course has uh, gained much uh, popularity in Brazil. We have uh, the, the non-discrimination -pro prohibition in Article 27 does not only relate to the field of technology, it also relates to whether products are imported or locally produced. Now, many uh, countries before the, before the coming into force of the TRIPS agreement had so-called so local working requirements, which meant that uh, the states were, were able to grant a compulsory license if the patent was not worked locally. That means if it was not uh, produced within the territory of protection. Now, after 1994, when the, when the TRIPS agreement was, uh, was negotiated, the U.S. came out of, uh, out, of, out of the negotiations and said, that, well, with the non-discrimination provision, they had killed uh, local working requirements forever. And I think it was Brazil who came out of the negotiations and said, well, we have saved the, uh, the local, our local working requirements. So the, this is uh, really an example of a provision which is uh, 
practically useless because uh, you can interpret it in both ways. And these are precisely the provisions that we're looking at because these are precisely the provisions that, that are important for, for a balanced um, design of the patent system. And, uh, and this is also our goal. Our goal is to show up uh, the obligations that, these, uh, that, that especially the TRIPS agreement imposes and at the same time show up the flexibilities that it leaves to states. It's nothing more and less, nothing less. Because it, it is really then up to, to national legislators, to policymakers, and, and, and to the courts in the end uh, to make the best uh, out of the flexibility they have. Everything we can do is to show up the legal, the legal um, uh, discretion that they have. Whatever uh, happens next is probably a matter of politics. And this uh, leads me to the last, uh, to my last slide, actually, which is the who question. And although we have, uh, we have started this project, although we have uh, um, initiated uh, one year ago, which basically means that we have uh, taken the burden of, 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 of raising funds, of, of, of taking care of all the administrative stuff which nobody wants to do anyway, which is uh, organizing conferences and so on, this is not really a Max Planck project. It is, in fact, a community project. We, uh, we're, we're all the 50 uh, academics that we had in, in Berlin uh, to, are, are part of. And of course, everybody else who wants to be. We have, we have, a, we have we'll, we're in the stage of drafting right now. We established, uh, right after the Berlin uh, meeting, we established a drafting committee, which was responsible for, for the content of the declaration, for the thrust of the declaration, for, for of course, for, for, for the wording. And by, by probably approximately July, uh, July next year, we're having our second meeting, which will not be a launching meeting which will be a meeting where we gather again with, uh, with uh, most of the people from Berlin, but maybe anyone uh, in here who is, uh, who is interested in, in being part of that as well. It's not going to be Rio, it's not going to be South Africa, it's going to be Singapore, which is uh, better than Berlin, so uh, some of you might, might, might want to come to Singapore. And uh, that's basically it. So if, if you are interested, uh, and I can, I can only repeat that, it, this is not a Max Planck project, it is a community project, and uh, it's, it's our a little contribution to, uh, to the future uh, development of uh, the international patent system. So if you are interested, if you want to come to Singapore, just uh, send us an email, give us a call, or, I mean, we've, we've been talking about the digital environment uh, all, all morning, so I'll... I'll also be pleased if you just send me a, an, an old-fashioned uh, handwritten letter. That would be fine as well. Thank you. <laughs>